You're listening to the Business Communicators. Hattie actually shared a, a really, really interesting uh, list in our group chat this week, and uh, it, it kind of outlines the the best and worst communicators and, and reputations from you know a leader perspective and then a corporation perspective in 2020. Um, Hattie, I'm going to turn the floor over to you just to kind of outline uh, you know this story and kind of give us a synopsis. And I think maybe it would be fun for us to you know offer our takes on whether this list got it right, they got it wrong, where we kind of weigh into this. Okay, this list comes from uh, Executive Grapevine. And, um, oh, I'm sorry, Provoke, excuse me. Uh, They had a long list of nominees, uh, people who were the best communicators, some who were the worst. And what was interesting to me is that um, as far as the best, the two top happened to be women, and these were world leaders. Uh, the world leader in New Zealand, uh, she's the prime minister. Her name is Jacinda Ardern. And she kind of followed up an exemplary response to the church Christ shootings in March 2019. And she's been doing a really good job communicating uh, around her government's handling of the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, and then the next leader was Germany's Angela Merkel, who was doing the same thing. Um, I thought it was a really interesting take on the whole list. And then one of the folks that kind of stood out as the best communicator who could probably be on either list was uh, Cuomo of New York, the New York's governor. And I think he, I think as part of him being one of the best communicators, he was, um, he did a really good job. People were saying he was being very transparent during uh, the pandemic, being honest, uh, making sure that he was communicating. And I, if I'm not mistaken, he communicated every single day of the pandemic, everything that was going on in New York, what people needed to do. He had a plat. He took his platform, and because he was getting lots of positive uh, people, he actually he 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 had a following. People would get on just to see what he was going to say the next day. Even I'm guilty of it myself. I was going to, I went on to see what he was going to say. And he was countering everything that was going on um, in the administration. So uh, people tend to turn to him because they felt like they were getting a more honest um, assessment of everything that was going on. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I, I mean, I, th- I think the list, it's, it's pretty interesting. Uh, you know, glad to see that Dr. Fauci is on there. Uh, you know, he is someone very deserving. Uh, Greta Thunberg's on there. AOC's on there. Um, you know, I, the New Zealand, Germany, I, I think both, they've handled it really well. I mean, New Zealand right now, um, you know, they're going on about their daily lives. You know, COVID-19 isn't an issue. You look at uh, Taiwan, for example, COVID-19 isn't an issue. They haven't had a case of local transmission since April, which is just insane. Uh, and then you contrast that with the situation that we have here in the United States, and it's it's been a disaster. I mean, we're starting to see, you know, cases creep up in Europe. I mean, um, France and Germany are now under lockdown. Spain's under lockdown. So, it, it you know, the second wave is definitely here, especially in Europe. Um, the only problem that I have with Cuomo is this. I think that he's a great communicator. I think he is a great as a storyteller. Um, I think he was poor as a crisis manager. Um, and I think that you can separate those two. I think you can say, yes, he is very well-spoken, very articulate. He gets his message across. I thought his PowerPoints that he did to supplement his press conferences were super, super well done. Um, the problem that I have is how poorly he handled the initial response with Mayor de Blasio in New York City. Um, you know, so many people died that didn't need to die. And I think part of that is government officials, whether you're Republican or Democrat, are to blame for um, the lack of response and taking COVID-19 seriously at the onset back in February, back in March. That's a huge issue. Um, and another problem that I have with Cuomo is him trying to capitalize off of this, you know, coming out with a book about leadership. I, I think leadership communications and crisis management are all separate categories. And I think that he's trying to take his great communication skills and leverage it to show that he has great leadership skills. And I'm not sure that's the same thing. You know, he's got a book that he's he's putting out. He's going on a book tour. I don't think that's a good idea, especially with the optics with COVID rising right now. He, he also basically sold merch on a website back in the summer when they were still having 
thousands of people day or die a day in New York. So I don't know about Cuomo. I could see where he could fit in on both sides of this list. But you look at the negative side. I thought this was kind of interesting. Trump, yeah, totally makes sense. I get it, 100%. Awful communicator. <laughs> and if he doesn't if he doesn't agree with you, he just starts attacking you. So I get that. Boris Johnson, I get that. But something that I did find is in- interesting was the, uh, the tech titans that were on the poor communicators for this year. You had Elon Musk, you had Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg. Tech industry has been under fire in the past few years, you know, regarding privacy issues, uh, regarding censoring content. Um, I don't know that, you know, the tech industry has really done an interesting or a a good enough job, you know, communicating to shareholders, stakeholders, um, customers. But the one thing that I did find interesting is when you look at the companies in terms of reputation, SpaceX was listed as a company that has a great reputation, obviously, you know, sending uh, two men up into space this, uh, you know, this summer on May 30th. I mean, that was an incredible accomplishment. So they have a positive reputation, but you look at the guy that founded them, Elon Musk has a negative reputation. So it's like, how do you balance separating the founder and kind of the, the face of the company with the company itself? And, and I was going to echo exactly what you said. It was while well, you have negative on Elon Musk and then you have SpaceX, which is, you know, part of the Tesla umbrella kind of thing. And, and, and not to say that this isn't a good list, but does the list lose a little credibility because of that kind of thing? Um, the technology side of it, also on the companies, you know, you have companies like Microsoft and Airbnb um, who, are, who are coming through there. Uh, Cuomo, I thought was interesting because to Austin's point, crisis management versus great communications are two in the same thing. You don't want to go out there with crisis management, have the exact same message every 10 minutes because people start to tune you out. But I I thought Cuomo did a good job humanizing himself by going on his brother's uh, CNN broadcast because listening to those two talk was worth was worth the admission uh, to, to watch that episode. But during that point in time, they, they, you know, dispelled those rumors and myths. And as we are in the crisis, no information is worse than the, the misinformation or, or not being 100% right at that time, because the story gets crafted, whether you're interjecting or not. Personal sentiment aside, when I'm looking at, um, looking at these folks and seeing, you know, these companies whether they had good reputations or bad, I'm looking at it based on, I looked at the panel of influencers who were choosing, making the choices. And these guys are some heavy hitters. Uh, One of my favorite, Boza, Bozana St. John is on it. And she has a great reputation. She's the new CMO of Netflix. Uh, But she's worked with different companies such as PepsiCo. Uh, She started out with Spike Lee. And I was looking at it from a perspective of, what were they thinking in terms of their choosing them? Uh, when you talk about Cuomo, uh, I agree that leadership and crisis management are two different things. However, I'm also going to look at the fact that compared to what other folks were doing, they made him look like a good leader, whether 100%. you like it or not. Yeah. So, uh, no matter where he went, he used his brother, he capitalized on whatever. People who were watching him, people who were believing him, chose him as an influencer. And he did influence during the whole pandemic. And um, so I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of agreeing to disagree from a different perspective. Um, Absolutely agree. Of that. And also, when you look at companies with these reputations, these are companies who are doing well, their shareholders are making money, um, and they're doing things differently. They're being very creative about it in some ways. So um, Elon Musk may have, a, may have a negative reputation, but he's making money for his shareholders. So whatever he's doing, he's doing something right. <laughs> in terms of from a business perspective. So I give him that. Yes, I, I, I as well. Um, and all these people that are listed, they have teams of people behind the scenes helping craft their message. Ha- ha- Absolutely. Testing their verbiages, everything like that. Um, one of the other companies that caught me off guard was the Peloton because as we go into the holiday season, 
Peloton caught a whole lot of flack um, for one is Peloton for the normal person and two, their ad of, of the Christmas present um, kind of jumps into mind. Uh, but but Hattie, you, you hit the nail on the head is these companies make a very strategic path, a strategic plan on what they're trying to do. Um, the Exxon Valdez oil spill comes to mind where Exxon said, you know what, we're not going to play with the media. We're going to focus on shareholders and their share price went up during it. Um, and, but in today's world, I don't think you can get away doing that ever again. Um, as we've seen with uh, the unfortunate events that happened in the Gulf a couple of years ago. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, reputation matters. Doing the right thing matters. I think that's so important. Um, so it's an interesting list. We'll we'll link to it in the show notes for the podcast. And speaking of great reputations, also want to give another shout out to our diamond partner, Pierpont Communications. Uh, Forbes actually named them one of America's best PR agencies this past week. They were one of only four agencies to receive the five-star rating in Texas. Um, so, you know, huge shout out to Phil Morbido, uh, the CEO of uh, Pierpont and his team for, um, you know, everything that they do, doing things the right way. Um, ironically, uh, the Richards Group was on there as well. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm guessing the survey was done prior. <laughs> Sorry, I have to laugh at that one. Yeah, I'm guessing the survey was done prior to the incident. You've been listening to the Business Communicators. 